What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mordai J and we are locked in. This is day three of our eight day recap of the Netflix series, The Madness. Munchie is going through it. He was in the streets letting off shots to let these kids know, y'all need to move around. We don't want anybody over here. We don't want any trouble. And his number one priority is to protect his family. But we know that there's gonna be some blowback because this community, they're not used to this ignorant activity. But before we jump into this and break down episode three, if you like this kind of content, murder mystery, trying to figure out who did what and get your man Muncie out of trouble from the law, then The Madness might be a series for you on Netflix. And if so, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers and it can only work if you help a brother out. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the recap of episode three, the discord of the Madness Netflix series. Starting off the episode, of course, we know nothing good was gonna come out of our boy Muncie shooting out in the street up in the air acting a damn food now he's saying he was feeling threatened everyone in the house going crazy demetrius is talking about yeah he was shooting off shot like pow 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 everybody's like calm down calm down but he's like i could defend myself and they're like man you didn't defend yourself you just shooting in the air that's reckless endangerment brother but he's losing it right now and this is episode three so you can only imagine how he's feeling and he's not trying to be tested by anybody because you can't trust anyone when you're on the run. So his son Demetrius comes and talks to him in the bathroom. He's trying to get himself together. He had that Thule on him. He got to put it in the paper bag. He's kind of confused, but he knows he's trying to protect his family. Now we know Demetrius has been getting in trouble for smoking weed. So he offers his dad two blunts and he says, listen, it's just to knock the edge off. But his dad's like, man, put that away. I don't want you smoking that stuff. Leave it alone. Even though he knows his son is going to do it, he still doesn't want him to do it. And Demetrius says, Dad, I know you smoke also, but this is not the time nor the place to be trying to smoke. He needs to get his thoughts together and figure out what's the next move. After Muncie leaves everyone because he doesn't want his family to be involved with this, the next morning, Demetrius calls him and says, Dad, are you all right? He's like, yeah, what's going on, son? The police are here. It's a detective and an agent. He's like, are they real police officers? He's like, yeah, I guess they are. But they're here about the incident that happened last night the shooting in the air because the neighborhood notified the police and of course they had to come over and see what the hell was going on now they're trying to explain there were some young punks outside they had them get them off the street because they were over here making threats but demetrius lets his dad know everything is good here in muncie he's like all right hold it down make sure your mom is safe i'll be back when i can the day is just beginning the cops are asking questions and now muncie he's going out to talk to the discord He's just going over there to find out about the guy named Ant. Remember, Ant was one of the people that he took care of out there in the swamp in episode one. So when he gets here, they're saying, why are you here? And he's like, uh, I just want to talk to Ant. They're like, all right, well, we need to pat you down. And we're going to see if Yang, the actual leader of the Discord profane, will have you in here. Now, they have snipers. They have an old abandoned school. They have a firing range. They have everything here. So this little militia, they aren't playing around. When he gets here, he walks through the firing range and there's a bald head guy that he looks at and he kind of resembles somebody he may have seen. When he gets here and he talks to Yang, Yang done his research also. He was looking at the cameras and he knows that Muncie was on TV, CNN to be exact. But he also sees that CNN has actually suspended him because of the shooting. Now they're going back and forth and he's like, you're not really here to do an interview. What are you here for? And that's when he brings up the guy Ant's name. Now the gentleman behind him says, okay, I know a little bit about Ant, but he's actually been hanging out with a guy by the name of Don. Now Yang is saying Don isn't a part of the discord, but he's been around here for a while. So with this information, now Muncie has at least one more step and one more clue that he can follow after. Cause Yang is saying, we don't have anything to do with whatever happened to that guy, MS, better known as Mark, that you're dealing with. After he leaves the compound, he has information about a gentleman by the name of Don. He calls Agent Franco. Franco says, you need to give me some information. A full name, does he even exist? Now he knows that Don hangs out at this place called Nelly, it's a swingers club. So he calls his ex-wife Elena and says, I need a favor from you. I need you to go with me to do a little bit of investigating. Now remember, she's been saying, let me help you get a lawyer since no one wants to represent you. So in favor of going to Nelly's, 
with him, he has to take on the lawyer that she's presenting to him. So it's give a little, receive a little, take a little, give a little. Everyone has to help each other out. When they show up to Nelly's, they got that red light on. They need to start finding out who knows the gentleman by the name of Don. When they go to the bar, there's a guy named Satchel. He's the bartender. He's like, I don't know anything about no Don. Maybe somebody, go ask somebody else, get out of here. You know, he's just here to make some drinks. And remember, this is in the afternoon. It's probably like four or five in the afternoon, but this is a swingers club. And if you don't know about swingers clubs, it's where you and your significant other, you go out and you guys don't mind entertaining other people, whether it's one person or a whole nother couple. As they sit around, they start reminiscing with each other. They definitely know they need to find out who Don is, but they're having a few drinks. Elena notices that the bartender Satchel has a shirt on called Cop Killers. Now this used to be a band, so that's their end. They go over and they start reminiscing about the band members, Cop Killers being on top of the game for a little bit. And this opens Satchel up. Now he's giving them drinks. He's like, okay, cool. You guys were talking about Don. How about I introduce you to two ladies that know about Don? The two women that know about Don, they don't know what's going on. They're just like, oh, yeah, we know Don. We actually partied with Don. He used to come in here a lot. We haven't seen him in a while. You even hear Muncie say, yeah, it's been a while since we've seen him also. But they bring up a penthouse. That's where they really been partying with him. A good old time. So Muncie's like, yeah, what was the penthouse called? What was it called? And they were like, Brooklyn? No, the, the bridge, the Brooklyn. But they end up telling him what the penthouse name is. And now we have another lead to where Don hangs out at. We had to go talk to the lawyer that Elena set up. We know that the place is called the Berkeley. We had to go to the penthouse. But before then, we make a pit stop to Isaiah. Now, Isaiah, he basically raised our boy Muncy. He knows the ins and outs of the streets. He's a very well-connected individual. Now, he's getting a rundown of everything that's been going on. And he knows that Muncy is innocent and wouldn't do anything like this. So right now, he's just giving him advice and letting them know you might need to lay low. This isn't a fair game for you. Everyone is against you. The odds of you making it out of this are very slim. But Muncie knows that he has a lead to at least Don, and he wants to continue to try to connect this together to prove his innocence. He sneaks into the Berkeley condominiums, sneaks past the front desk, gets on the elevator, and goes all the way up to the penthouse. When he gets there, there's a white gentleman. He's asking him, hey, are you lost? Do you know where you're at? So he makes up a story that he has a realtor about to show him one of the penthouses. Now, this guy, Don, is saying, are you sure? Because um, I live up here and there's four other families, but I don't think anyone's selling up here. And he's like, well, I'm looking for a gentleman by the name of Don. And he says, well, it's your lucky day. My name is Don. Would you like to come and see my place? My place is actually laid out like everyone else's. So now we're actually talking to Don and we're about to see what his penthouse looks like and if we can get any information. The only issue is this Don turns out to be Don Sr. He has a son, Don Jr., who got kicked out the military. Now, this guy is a grifter. One day he's with the biker clubs. Next day he's with different kind of organizations. And then the next day he's asking for money. Now, Muncie is hearing this and he's trying to get as much information as possible that is available from Don Sr. Now, Don Sr. is getting a little weary saying, wait a minute, if my son owes you money or something, you need to leave a body here. But he's like, nah, nah, he doesn't owe me any money or anything. I just need to talk to him because some funny things are happening for me. But Don Sr. says, you need to go now before I call the cops because you came into my home under false pretenses. After collecting this information about Don, he brings it to Agent Franco, who said he needed first and last name if this guy is real. And he's like, here you go. And I gave you Jennings, RIP to her. But what do you really investigate? Now, there's a guy by the name of Stu Magnus. He owns a hedge fund, very, very rich billionaire with the B. And the cabinet that Mark was staying in was his cabinet. And also, he's been paying Mark monthly like clockwork. The first and the 15th, he's been getting checks from Stu. So there's some kind of connection between this billionaire and Mark. And that's because Mark is powerful. But if you can get these organizations to start donating money, and give influence, this will allow Stu to make more moves within the industry. After hearing all of this, he gets a call from Lucy, Mark's ex. 
Now she's like, come and talk to me. We can't do it over the phone. That's because she found out information on the phone that he was getting death threats, her husband, Mark. Remember the guy Dick Slick that they were doing an investigation on? He's actually in here also. So Lucy and Muncie, they're working together because they have the same motive. Find out who is after them. So right now, they're both like, okay, I know who Don is. There's a guy by the name of Stu. Do you have any information of Stu paying Mark while you were together? So now she has another task while he has to go and try to meet up with Stu and get questions. After doing his research and looking on Forbes, he found out that Stu Magnuson has a actual table at this nice, mm, this hotel is very, very nice. I probably wouldn't be able to get in there. But when he gets there, he excuses everyone at the table and he starts bringing up questions about Mark. He's asking Stu, what did you have to do with Mark? He was renting out one of your cabins. You were paying him monthly. What's really going on here? Now, Stu was like, who the hell are you and how did you get this information? Now, he knows who Muncie is because it's all over the news. But still, to be coming in here and asking these questions, it's kind of like you're threatening me in my own place. After talking to Stu, he goes and grabs a drink because after a long day, why not get a drink, especially after a long day of investigating? He gets a phone call from a random number and the guy is talking about how is his father? How is your family? Are you enjoying New York? And he's like, who is this? But he finds out that this is Don Jr. And the crazy thing is he tells him, hey, you need to finish your whiskey as if he's watching him. So then he goes outside and he's trying to find out whoever this bald head guy, because remember, that's who was in the, the shooting range that looked familiar. So he starts to chase after him and it's actually Don Jr. But he loses trail of him and it takes him to <sighs> takes him to New York City. I'm talking about Times Square. He ends up losing Don. And as I mentioned, he ends up in Times Square. But on all of the billboards, CNN's even reporting the remains of Mark Simon was found in Muncie's condo within the building. Everyone's looking at him. He is now suspect number one. And let me tell you, this has to be the most nervous thing that you could ever go through. I'm talking about you're trying to dodge anyone noticing you, recognizing you because your name and face is plastered all over these big boards there you go the recap of episode three of the madness let me know what would you have done if you seen your face plastered all over these billboards and people are looking at you how nervous would you get would you be able to play it cool and just slowly walk away go off into the alleyways and disappear or would you try to hightail it out of there before anyone notices you let me know what you think this is day three tune in tomorrow for day four of the eight day recap of the madness on netflix I'm Mode IJ. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 75,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.